Chapter 7 In One Way, Out Another How did... how did they discover you were here? Anastasia asked Phoenix as they ran through an abandoned tunnel, alarms screaming behind them. It's really gonna make you laugh when I tell you. I could sure use one right now. It's not like I turn my back on everything I was ever taught growing up every day. I know, but it's too dangerous for you to stay here now. Anyway, they found me by dumb luck. I sneeze as I pass in a frame. Anastasia stopped running. A sneeze? A sneeze caused all this? I don't believe it! Phoenix turned, quickly picking her up just as a red beam of light hit the spot she had stopped at. That was a bit too close for comfort. Hold on tight, you're about to see one of the ways I enter and exit this building. Anastasia absent-mindedly held onto Phoenix's waist tightly while mumbling. Uh, a sneeze. All this because of a sneeze. The tunnel began to fracture wildly. Its colors shifted out of their proper placements. Phoenix ran harder as the world seemed to stretch away from them in all directions. Anastasia snapped out of her bewilderment, gripping Phoenix tighter, yelling, fear in her voice. What in the hell is going on? Don't worry, we'll be out in a second or two. Out of what? Too much to explain, just know that it deals with quantum mechanics. The world snapped back into place around them as Phoenix slowed to a stop. Instead of being in an abandoned tunnel miles underground, they now stood in front of a looming high-rise. Anastasia gazed up the side of the high-rise in awe. It looks like it touches the sky. Not yet, but it comes close. Phoenix opened his large, majestic wings, pushing them towards the ground with a sense of carefree ease. The ground rushed away as he carried them high up the side of the building to the balcony at the top. Wings flaring out, he landed softly on the balcony where they were met by a normal-sized woman with long auburn hair. She looked at Phoenix, then to Anastasia, clearing her <clears> throat. throat. Realizing that she was still tightly holding on to Phoenix, Anastasia blushed, loosening her grip and slipping down beside him. Couldn't sleep, Rachel? No, I couldn't. I was up all night worrying. About you. You said you'd only be gone for an hour or two. I know, but complications arose that I couldn't avoid. Rachel, sternly appraising Anastasia, then replied. I bet they did. Phoenix, not used to having to explain his actions, decided he'd have to this time since he did bring Anastasia back with him. It wasn't Anastasia's fault that I took so long getting back. I sneezed while passing Agent Frank. Let me get this straight, Phoenix. You brought the next in line for hunting you back. Here, what were you thinking? Trust me on this, Rachel. I know what I'm doing here. She's not going to be hunting me now or anytime in the future. And I brought her back because- Because she has a pretty face and you felt sorry for her. Rachel interrupted Phoenix. No. Because they already discovered she had two contacts with me in her quarters already. So you're telling me you brought her back here because you wanted to protect her? Anastasia stepped behind Phoenix in an attempt to hide from Rachel's threatening look. Of course I did. What other reason would I have? I don't know, Phoenix. Rachel paused, looking at Phoenix's left arm. Is that blood on your arm? Phoenix looked down at his arm and was dumbfounded seeing that he was bleeding. Looking annoyed, Rachel grabbed Phoenix's right arm and pulled him inside. Come on, we see what you've done to yourself this time. Why it isn't healing? I have the faintest idea how or when that happened. Phoenix followed Rachel. Not much of a choice since she had him by the arm. Anastasia stood on the balcony, not sure what to do. Come on in, Anastasia. Phoenix said cheerfully to her. Rachel turned quickly, resentment in her voice. Oh no you don't. This is my home, and as far as I'm concerned, you are not welcome in it. Anastasia, head down, turned away, looking out over the balcony. Shooting Rachel a harsh look, Phoenix stopped walking. What? Oh, fine. 
Come in, Anastasia. Just know I'll have my eye on you. Rachel said grudgingly. Anastasia warily walked in from the balcony. Rachel sat Phoenix down on the bed while pulling out an old wooden box that at one point of time had been covered with leather. Opening the box, she took out some old brown glass bottles and several white cloths. Anastasia watched intently as Rachel turned on a light by the bed and held a magnifier to the wound. Hmm. Looks like they tried to bug you. How did you get out of there this time? A portal. Terraform? No, Mechron. Ah, that's what did it. You fried the secretary in the bug and it exploded in your arm. Now why it won't heal is the strange part. Think they have a chemical mixed in with the bug? Shouldn't matter. Not with your genetic coding. More than likely, you've lost a feather again. I can't wait for my next rising. It should be fixed then, so it wouldn't matter how many feathers I lose. Anastasia, not knowing what they were talking about, perked up when she heard feather. In her back pocket was the missing one. Um, I can help here. Rachel looked at Anastasia, doubt on her face. No, really, I have it right here. Anastasia took the feather out of her pocket, showing them. All right, good job, Anastasia. Phoenix joyfully chimed. I'll take that, thank you. Rachel got up, snatching the feather from Anastasia's hand. All right, drink this down. Now. All of it? You want it to heal or not? A look of disgust on his face, Phoenix drank the mixture in the bottle squinting his eyes and sticking his tongue out as he handed it back to Rachel. Got something took the taste out of my mouth? Really? You can be so childish at times, Phoenix. Rachel reached for a lollipop from the box. What's it to be this time? Cherry or lime? Cherry. Phoenix replied with a big grin on his face. Anastasia couldn't <laughs> help but giggle. A cherry lollipop now in his mouth Rachel wrapped his wound with the white bandages. Anastasia yawned, tired from the day's <sighs> events. Phoenix took the lollipop out, gesturing towards Anastasia. I guess we should find a place for you to sleep tonight. I know, you can sleep in my bed. Rachel pulled tightly on the bandage. Ow! Careful! Anyway, and I'll sleep on the sofa in the living room. Sorry. Rachel loosened the knot and wiped off the blood. Anastasia surveyed his room. I don't want to kick you out of your own bed, so I'll sleep on the sofa. Rachel mumbled under her breath. She can sleep outside for all I care. Phoenix hit Rachel with his lollipop on her forehead. Behave. I'll sleep on the sofa, she'll sleep in my bed, and that's final. Withholding any further objections, Rachel wet one of the cloths and proceeded to wipe the stickiness from her forehead making a mental note to restock with smaller safety pops. Placing the lollipop back in its wrapper, Phoenix spoke again. Will you be needing some clothes for tonight? Or have they taught you how to use fire to manifest them? No, I only learned how to use it to fix my hair up when I'm in a rush. That won't do it all. Thinking for a moment, he spoke again. You know, you do look about Rachel's size. Rachel's mouth dropped. Measuring her reaction, he continued. Or, I could lend you one of my shirts to wear. Rachel bit the bottom of her lip, remembering the lollipop incident. Phoenix exploded into laughter. I'm only joking, Rachel. I'll create something for her to wear tonight. Rachel visibly bit her tongue. I'm thinking flannel. Phoenix concluded. Rachel slugged him in the arm. Standing up from the bed, Phoenix walked over to Anastasia, looking her up and down, rubbing his chin. She watched him, unsure of what he was doing. Now, the wings will be tricky part. Do you usually sleep with them in or out? She looked at him, confused. In or out? Before he could reply, Rachel spoke up. Yes. Do you normally sleep with your wings folded into your back or not? They can go into my back? Anastasia mused. Phoenix shot a look at Rachel, and then answered Anastasia. Yes, like this. He unbuttoned his shirt, tossing it onto the bed. 
Anastasia blushed lightly. His wings stretched, then collapsed into his back, leaving it bare, normal looking. Shock on her face, Anastasia realized not only had she not seen that happen before, it was yet another ability not listed in his file. Her voice quavered as she responded. No, I can't do that. I don't think anybody there can do that. Agent Frank can. Phoenix assured her. Anyway, I'll just have to make you something with slits in the back for your wings. 